In this video, we're going to talk about interval notation. Now, one of the reasons to do this video is that when you're working the problems in my math lab, most of the time they want you to put your final answer in interval notation. So we're going to talk about what that means. So let's suppose we have an interval here from 3 to 7. Now, the interval includes 3. It's closed at 3, but it does not include 7. So if we were writing our solution the way we have been writing it, we would write it like this. Okay, now this is assuming that our variable is x. If our variable were p, we would put a p. If it were an m, we'd put an m, and so forth. Okay, so this just means that x is greater than or equal to 3, and it's less than 7. To write this in interval notation, we would write it like this. It'd be the interval from 3 to 7, and it's closed at 3 and open at 7. Okay, so this is interval notation here. Okay, the interval from 3 to 7. You put the left endpoint of your interval in the first spot here and the right endpoint in your in the second spot. So you would not do 7, 3, you do 3, 7. And just like we have the bracket here, we'll have a bracket here. Okay, at the 3. Just like we have an open parenthesis at the 7, we'll have an open one here. Okay, now let's do another example. Let's suppose that we have the interval from 2 now, we don't have a right endpoint here. This, this means an arrow here, kind of like this arrow. This just means our interval goes from 2 all the way out to infinity. Okay, it doesn't stop. There's no right endpoint of our interval. How would we write this in just ordinary notation? Well, we write it as x is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, all those values that are greater than or equal to 2 we're including. And I have the or equal to because this is a bracket. So how would you write this in interval notation? Well, we'd be talking about the interval from 2 to what? Well, we just say 2 to infinity. Okay, and we're going to put a closed bracket around the 2. Now, around an infinity, you always put an open parenthesis. Now, that's just by convention. One way to kind of think about it is, does your interval really include infinity? Well, infinity is not a number, so it can't include infinity. So we always put an open parenthesis around an infinity. Okay, so there's our answer in interval notation. Okay, now let's suppose we have one that is an interval to the left. Okay, so this one uh, is open at 4, but it's an interval that extends all the way to infinity, right? Notice there's no left endpoint. This arrow just means it keeps continuing on and on to the left. Okay, well, we're going from where to where? Well, we're, we're beginning at negative infinity. Okay, remember, negative infinity is way to the left, just like positive infinity is way to the right. So negative infinity to 4, and we're going to put open at 4 because this is... That's an open parenthesis here because that's open right here. And also, of course, we always put an open around the infinity. Okay, so it's the interval from minus infinity to 4. Okay, in the last example, let's suppose that our answer includes two intervals. So let's suppose our answer ended up being x is less than or equal to negative 5 or x is greater than 7. So we're including all those numbers that are either less than or equal to negative 5 or greater than 7. How do we write this? Well, one way to do it is to, first of all, make the interval notation for this interval. So that's the interval from minus infinity to minus 5. Okay, closed at minus 5, open here. And the interval over here is from 7 to infinity. Now you could put plus infinity if you want, but I usually just put infinity. But it's the interval from 7 to infinity. And what we put in between them, well, you really have two choices. Uh, sometimes interval notation, they just, just write the word or. Okay, another way, okay, another way, though, is to do in negative infinity to negative 5, okay, and 7 to infinity and use this little u symbol. Okay, that just means the union of these two intervals. <clears throat> okay, so there's two ways to write the interval notation if we have a situation like this where you have two intervals. All right, now let's go back and look at our answers from the previous videos and write them in interval notation. So uh, I believe it was a couple of videos ago. We, we solved this inequality up here, negative, or, or I'm sorry, 3x minus 5 is less than 6 minus 2x. We got our answer was x is less than 11 fifths, or x is a less than 2.2. We graphed our solution on the number line. So we can write our answer in interval notation as the interval from minus infinity up to well, depending on whether you want to do a decimal or a fraction, we could put it as negative infinity to 11 fifths, or another way to do it would be negative infinity to 2.2. I think most of the problems, though, in my math lab, they want you to leave it as a uh, fraction. 
Okay. Um, sometimes it'll say put your answer as a fraction or a whole number. Other times it'll say put your answer as a decimal. Okay, but here's one way to write the answer. If they wanted it as a decimal, it would be negative infinity to 2.2. Okay, we also did this problem here where we went from, uh, we, we solved 13 minus 7p is greater than or equal to uh, 10p minus 21. And we got our solution, p is less than or equal to 2. Okay, so here was the solution in interval, uh, the graphical uh, representation of our solution on a number line. In interval notation, this would be the interval from minus infinity up to 2. And we're including 2 as part of our answer. And so we put the bracket here. And remember, we always put open parenthesis around uh, an infinity or negative infinity. Okay, and finally, uh, in another video, uh, we had our solution as the interval from negative one-third to ten. It was closed at the left end point, negative one-third, and open at ten. In interval notation, this would be the interval from minus one-third to ten. This is not wanting to write very well here. Uh, but it's open at ten and closed here. Okay, so this would be the answer in interval notation. And finally, one more thing. Uh, I did an example in another video, uh, which um, I've already created the video, but you might not have seen the video yet. But anyways, it was an example about a pretzel manufacturer. And I went through and worked out the problem, and I got that uh, x has to be greater than or equal to 450,000 bags of pretzels. But I forgot to put the answer in interval notation. Okay, so to say that x is greater than or equal to 450,000, we'd be talking about the interval from 450,000. This is having trouble writing here, uh, all the way up to infinity, and it would be closed here. So the problem in the book says, put, or the problem in my math lab says, put your final answer in interval notation, and this is what it would be.